Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the AI Insights Podcast. I'm your host, Adima Zorkario, product design and AI expert, and the creator of the Online Leaders Program, Unlocking the, Gener- the Power of Generative AI. And today we're diving into a crucial topic that's on everyone's mind, the potential risk of artificial intelligence, particularly with the rise of the powerful generative AI models. Joining us is the leading AI expert who has written on the, the subject, exploring the potential danger of bias, manipulation, and job displacement. We'll be dissecting how we can navigate these risks while harnessing the incredible power of AI for good. So now we can start. How, hi, Roya. How are you? Good, good. Thank you so much. And thank you for the beautiful introduction. I really appreciate it. Um, I would be more than happy to talk about how we can utilize the benefits of AI while also being so mindful of how it can pose risk to our society. Sure. And uh, and Roya is a generative AI research and scientist. And we can start. So you wrote an article on AI risk and I read it and it's really interesting. So what inspired you on this article and what are some key concerns you have? Uh, truth being told, I realized that there is a gap in our society among people who deal with AI in their daily basis and people who are not really involved with these new technologies. And the most interesting one was somebody um, who came to me and there said, I think you will put everybody in danger and Hollywood is warning us about the dangers of AI because you scientists, you are building basically all of these technologies that would make us all pay. I generated this um, series of talks that I think I was lucky that I was invited to multiple um, big cities in the U.S. to discuss them, uh, to discuss what is actual um uh, the actual reality of uh, generative AI risks and how we can mitigate them and how we also can benefit from these. Um, a spoiler alert, uh, this is not what Hollywood portrays as robots marching down the street and or like we have this crazy um, super intelligent that tries to kill us or um, take us slave. But the reality of what we are working towards and sometimes we are not um, really sitting down to think about it is that, yes, generative AI can have impact on our life, on our day-to-day life, and we need to be prepared for that. We need to have a society that is educated and we need to have laws and regulation that saves us from what can go wrong. Yeah. You know, I, I think that in many cases we see technological uh, advancements and people working in technology and they're so enthusiastic about the potential of this big thing that it's always the discussion of what we could do with this technology and the discussion of what we should do with the technology is like, it's not there almost. Maybe after math would be done when we are thinking what was the result as we have right now with social media or mobiles. But while it was created, I don't think anyone really thought thoroughly on the implications on society. Do you think that right now with AI, which is even bigger than what we had before, do you think people are thinking about it more? Um, let me... Uh... I have multiple comments about that. Have you watched Oppenheimer last year when it was on its boom? No, I didn't see the movie, but my son saw it. So I I got a a recap of of the movie. (laughs) (laughs) I think Oppenheimer brings it really to the screen that um, the scientist community, they get get so excited exactly about... How things are going and what type of advancement that they can make, that sometimes it gets pushed back on. Okay, let's actually think about what are the implications of what we are building here on on other people, like those who are not scientists, those who are not immediately involved with it. Um, but at the same time, and I know that's a comment from 
every crazy scientist, but I rather it to be me building it than somebody else who actually has malicious intentions. So by no means I'm on the side of let's stop science and stay and think about what we are building. There is no way that we can stop everybody from like building the science, advancing the technologies. And if the good people stay behind, then we don't have enough of forces to eventually um, control what bad can come from it, right? That's one aspect of it. The other part of it is um, that I think it doesn't require the scientists just to think about them because whenever I sit in a scientific community, everybody's talking about it. Everybody's talking about all of the risks, what can go wrong, and what we are implementing right now to make sure that nothing goes wrong, right? But we need a society to get there. And that is the broken pipe right now. That is the that is the broken piece of this puzzle to make sure that even if all of the scientists make sure that they are doing the right thing, unless we have people who are enthusiastic about this and they wanted to know more and they wanted to be ready for what is coming next, we cannot make the law change. And if we do not have the laws and regulation, then uh, we are actually in a, in a disadvantage because yeah. then the, the people who are uh, ba- basically not really in power, they would be the one who suffer the most. This yeah. is in one society, but also like on earth, as in like as humanity, we need to think about this because the compute and data that we are utilizing right now, it's burning the, the earth. It is a lot of energy that we are utilizing to tune these um, really, really significantly large models. And we are so interested in making them better and bigger. And right now, everybody thinks as better and bigger as equal, that we are forgetting about the impact that it has on Earth. So it makes what we are building here to go way beyond our immediate groups, our society. It's going to impact people who are not even live close to us. But the climate change, the impact that we are having on earth would impact them and make their life actually worse than maybe what it is today so i i agree that scientists need to think of, need to think about this but i also beg people to try to learn more and i do everything in my personal power to go and teach other people that what can be done what should be thought about what are the laws and regulations that can help maybe in the future yeah. So so we discussed the implication of using this uh, technology that requires uh, compute power, meaning uh, energy in the end. Um, what would be your number one concern? Are we talking about job displacement, about bias? Are we talking about uh, uh, fake news? What would be the things that you're most worried about? Um, This is my personal opinion, so I don't want it to be affiliated with um, anything else. But I'm really worried about fake news. I'm worried about, not just because of the fake news at itself, because of the psychological impact that it can have on people to make them feel more isolated and feel more about other people as as enemies. Um, To think that what wrong goes through their life is because they cannot make other people understand them. And that misunderstanding would go so big that breaks a society. And one interesting example that I saw personally was um, there is this robot um, that there, there is a like electrical glitch and it stops working and it's in an exhibit. And this robot is supposed to get the boxes and put them in a shelf. And then middle of the job, which is obviously a, like a mundane, repetitive task, uh, the, uh, the robot stops working and like falls down on the floor. The title that I saw on news such days is like there's an electronic or like a, there's a glitch basically and the robot stops working. And somebody showed it to me and it was, The emotional burden of the repetitive task made robots uh, like suicide, 
commit a suicide. It, it's the same news, right? The content is the same thing, but the title is so different and so targeted toward people who wanted to hear something different that actually it makes them to have evidence toward what they are thinking. So if you wanted to believe that robots are sentient, if you want to believe that Gen AI can bring robots, march down the street, and you want to like believe in, I don't know, iRobots and other type of movies, Terminator, that go down the same path, this is exactly gives you what you want. When people are talking about this big tech company who uh, fired one of their employees because they uh, wanted to be the whistleblower on sentient AI, while they just played into the game of um, basically the generative AI and how they wanted to be positive. So if you ask them something, whether they are sentient or not, because they wanted to be positive, they reply to you as they are. So that is something built into them. But this type of news can really work into the narrative that robots are sentient and we are building them and they're going to do basically like eliminate humanity. This type of disparities and the digital silos that we are building through recommendation system, it essentially eventually make these make all of the societies to to reach to a breaking point because we push people toward the end of this spectrum. Um, I love to think yeah. that maybe like twenty thirty years ago, if you were bored, you would go out to a cafe or to a bar and you would grab a drink with somebody who might not think immediately like you, but sharing that drinks made you to find a common ground. But right now you sit behind your computer or you scroll through your uh, cell phone and you see what you wanted to see to hate the others who don't think like you. And you watch movies that are really curated for what you wanted to watch. If you want to watch certain topics, that's that will be the only thing that would be provided to you. So you never get to exercise your mind to think about what others might experience, what, what others might think. Yeah. That, but, that is something that can bring the whole world to a chaos and yeah. scares me the most. Yeah. But I think that your example is very similar to what we currently have in social media, that everybody sees their own reality or version of reality. And the fact that somebody gave this title to the robot is something that we have like in regular news. They're telling the story the way that they want it to be heard and the, from the point of view that they want to, to share. I, I think that the, that the case that AI would create something that is totally artificial, like artificial art, artificial um news, artificial articles, artificial uh, um, music, everything, and, and people, of course, characters that you relate to, it means that your understanding of reality would change. You would not know what is real. This is like a real human being or is just AI playing this person or a, an imaginary person or uh, is this like real news or is it something that was twisted or manipulated or is it not existing at all we would never know because ai has this capacity of creating easily generative ai would create images videos and and sounds that we would believe that it's true so it's really easy for us to just imagine taking you know currently we have the uh, elections in the us so it, it's so obvious you could just take each one of the candidates and make them say whatever you want and share it with other people. Oh, that is true. But um, something that makes me optimistic about future is a lot of these models, um, despite being open source or closed source, they are trying to implement a watermark um, into their generated content that um, enable us to identify them. And I agree if you wanted to argue with this point, saying that this is an arm race and there would be always the bad guy having access to these models and try to build them without uh, this uh, basically identifier on watermark. But then we are going to build something better and bigger that's going to combat that. So although 
I'm 100% with you that we need to have an educated society that have critical thinking and would look for the source of every content that they are observing. But at the same time, I think a lot of the um, bigger companies, they are trying to also build these um, methods to identify generated content. One of the most interesting one that I saw personally is somebody, um, actually a female uh, entrepreneur and a founder, she built a um, essentially an identifier for every recording uh, to make sure that those recordings are not generated. And she utilized those to, uh, to basically in a court case, um, use those recordings as evidence because right now uh, it's a little bit more challenging to make sure that the recording is not generated. So the, I think this is the good news is that we are identifying this problem and we are trying to find remedies, but the risk is always there that somebody can come with a bigger and better model and they don't want it to include any of the watermarks. It brings mm. all brings it all back to having an educated society, a society who wants to know and who tries to communicate. Yeah, but, but if you're thinking about the society right now, I don't think it will change that much in the next like few years. People first, they want to believe what they see and they get the news right now or what they see on TV, whatever, reality shows, whatever, and they see it as the truth. And and I don't think that they have the energy or even the capabilities to really know what is true. So is it something that is, is it the real story or somebody is telling you the story that they want you to hear? And it's going to be much harder when you have these tools that everybody could reach a tool that that is like less, um, that don't have these watermarks or these restrictions and could create it in 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 mass uh, uh, capabilities that everybody could could get that. So we just need to share it really widely. And, and as I see it, I think that most people don't really they know it could be done. You know, I see my kids and everything that I send them, they say, "Oh no, it's fake, it's fake." It's like they're used to questioning everything. But uh, I think it will demand so much from us. To really know what what is there what is really out there? Did this politician say that or not? Did one hundred percent agree with yeah, you? It's it's so hard, and, and it's like as I see it, I think it will demand from us as human beings something that is um, that could impact the way that we see the world. Just you know, just questioning: is it true? Is it like truth? Is it what we see is real? And do you know? Um, did you hear about this um, uh, person who was a, a, he is a finance person that was a fraud that somebody uh, uh, imitated his boss? D do you know that that he called a I heard Zoom similar call? story that the guy lost twenty million dollars right. because they thought the boss wants them. Pay yeah. Or something. So he talked Absolutely. on a Zoom call to several of his of the managers and the CEO, and they were all AI creations t taking the images of these people that he trusted, and the boss in in the presence of all these people in the Zoom call, they they were all fake, other than the the person who really did that, who who listened to the AI, and he uh, he was asked to transfer uh, i think 20 million into a certain account and he just did it in the end and i think that uh, we're just starting to see all the frauds and um all of these stories just starting you know and i know that somebody called as as a mo mother of someone that needed help or a friend of someone and you don't really know who you're talking to i agree oh i th I heard that people are like in families even are starting to have code words and something that is really, really random and nobody can think about. Like um, the funny one that I heard was a purple watermelon with orange seed. And it's, it's <laughs> funny, but at the same yeah. time, that can be something that you cannot immediately build with an AI. But I 100% agree. The, the threat of um, cybersecurity attacks 
with AI, with Gen AI is really real and it's really happening right now. The reason for that is previously, if I wanted to target somebody, I just need, I, I needed to go through all of their social media as a person to go and figure out what is their wants, what is their needs, who are the people that they are associated with them, build a story to be able to attack and like, basically a scam that person right now you have access to all of their digital footprint because you are not a person this attacker this agent is not a person anymore they have the access to all of the internet they can build model or model can be built that uh, can mimic somebody's uh, face mimic somebody's voice with it mimic somebody's behavior because we have access to a variety of people personalities and we can match based on somebody's want to what personality they have we also have access to their relationships like everything that we put out there on social media you have the full package to mimic somebody so unless we make our society educated and known about all of these we are in in disadvantage but while you were discussing this you mentioned the point that I think you nailed it. We are, uh, our society might not want to know because it's easier to believe what you see and the reality that you are used to. Uh, and and I think we are going backwards um, with a lot of trends that we see in the social media. Um, I, I don't know if I can talk about this a little bit, but um, a few ones that I see and they particularly bother me as also a women advocate or a lot of content that are fed to our younger generations about a stay at home girlfriends or traditional wives that basically they promote the idea that women should be uh, financially depending on men. And I think if we go back a, li- a little bit, a study deeper, it brings the idea that I want to have a easy life with no responsibility and with no effort. So I'm taking the risk, but I just wanted to believe in this life that nothing goes wrong. I think if the society wants to stay in that stage, that believing we can have a good, happy, easy life with no effort, we are actually going to be at disadvantage with AI as well because it's easier to believe what we see. It's easier to believe um, anything, any content that brings to us. And if we believe that this is our society, unfortunately, we are going to get to a breaking point. And that would be the chaos that I'm deeply afraid of. Yeah. And let's talk about bias. The fact that most of the information that we have right now, the digital information that we have comes from the Western society that uses technology for very long. And the the information is very biased because people are biased and they created this information. Uh, You have many more uh, images of uh, men or white men on uh, available on digital platforms and these platforms would be the source of the data used for these models. So what could we do? Because, you know, that's the reality. This is the data that we have, and this is the data that is utilized. Could we invent data? Could we change what, what cur- currently is the situation online? What should we do in order to um, understand bias and do something about it? Uh, that's a really, really interesting point. And I really appreciate that you are recognizing the fact that we are, we deal with this bias in our daily life and this exists in our society and it's just being magnified when we are seeing it in AI. Um, a lot of the large language model right now, they are being trained on our literature and a lot of the masterpiece in the literature they are actually heavily biased. Uh, there are a few of the masterpieces on uh, still on a screen. I love a few of these movies. I enjoy watching them, but I cannot comprehend how biased they are. But we are still because of all of our like past um, 
ideas about these movies if you're still enjoying them. Yeah. But, and, and just thinking about the writers, who are the writers of all this literature? It's a very absolutely. specific part of society that is writing something that would be in these libraries that we're using, right? Absolutely. We are teaching these machines to learn from us, but we had never sat down and sift this information to make sure that these machines are not learning the bad things. We have a history that is not so glorified. Like, not everything in our history is right. We, humanity made mistakes, and we are still teaching the model with everything that humanity has done. It requires effort. Um, to make sure that the data that we are utilizing is not biased. And there are methods to actually do that. There are distilling, there are fine-tuning that we can apply on the models to make sure that they are not going wrong. Um, essentially, you are you build the model and you try to find um, the flaws and you generate a curated um, subset of the data to retrain the model or you to your point, you generate synthetic data uh, that can be utilized to match or basically balance uh, the data that you already have, or you build guardrail for this model to make sure that the response is not harmful or hateful, or uh, essentially be biased. All of these require effort. And as long as we don't want to, we, as long as bias is not a uh, concern for everybody, uh, it is not going to happen. I want to give an example. This is my analogy. Uh, we choose where to go shop. A certain company might uh, have a higher price tag, but that other cheaper price tag might come from association with child labor or forced labor or bad working environment. And we need, I at least think, and I put it on my uh, conscious that whether I want to like pay that extra money to have my conscious at peace, or do I want to go and buy the cheaper stuff that might be because of breaking the back of a like a six years old who has to stay at the sweatshop and work. If the society comes to the conclusion that I rather to pay the higher price tag, I think we can expect the society to also wait and ask the companies who are building this model to actually spend on it because that brings value and that brings market to the society. I'm overjoyed to say that a lot of European companies, they are actually uh, um, building their business model based on that fact, that they are building models that one, they are, save their privacy and security so none of the data would go back to the uh, parent company. And two, they are utilizing models that are not biased, they are not helpful, and they are inherent in the model, not any guardrail. We are not talking about patches. We are talking about models that from the get-go, they uh, utilize data that is not biased. Whereas maybe in some other countries, the, the mindset is still on, let's make it cheaper so everybody can use even on the cost of the the output to be biased or hateful or harmful. So yeah. I I think we need to get there, but maybe not everybody is still on yeah. the same page. Yeah. I, I think that uh, most people are not aware of the fact that it demands uh, lots of efforts and resources in order to make it more uh, equal or less biased. Uh, and I think that it, it has this, like, there is a question mark here because on one side, we don't want to rewrite history from, from scratch saying like, yeah, there was like things that people should not have done, but now we're starting from, you know, from blank slate, nothing was there. And then we're just denying our history and our humanity. And on the other side, we want to create a different future. And just to understand what that means and what is this information that we're uh, striving to have and is it um, manipulating th truth or is it trying to imagine what could be if we were a different humans or building machines with different people as their source? And, and it's not that obvious, right? 
I think about the AI systems as children. Uh, I always make the make the point that right now the LLMs are like uh, three to five years old that they can answer and they have a good memory, but they still cannot make sense of it. And hopefully they will grow up uh, soon. Uh, but to your point, let me ask you this question. If you have a child right now, uh, how would you uh, explain the history to them? Would you give them the history as in, uh, just as a whole and tell, ask them to make a decision? Or maybe in their younger ages, uh, you guide them a little bit or provide them enough of information at least to be able to make a decision? Yeah, this is I, a lot on us. That's, that's a good question. How do we teach our children to be good human beings? That, that's it, the real question, right? Exactly. Uh, and and the thing is that the discussion right now is held in the hands of technological people, right? People who build these machines. I know that uh, you mentioned Oppenheimer, and I know that uh, Sam Altman mentioned the book of, of Oppenheimer and he says that it's next to his like bed just waiting and yeah Oppenheimer helped build the atomic bomb and what we're creating right now has implications uh, on on humanity uh, which are very big but is Sam Altman and I I have nothing against Sam Altman or anyone else in technology but are they the people who need to create something so substantial based on the fact that they're good in technology. Yeah, they know how to build these things, but the questions are philosophical, they're ethical questions, and the fact that it will impact such a large percentage of, of society means that the questions should be asked in other levels, not only in this small island in, in, you know, in, in the Bay Area. No, I 100% agree with that. I agree with the part that we need to ask these questions, but by no means I wanted to promote to stop the advancement because we can have this um, argument on the surface, but there are so many other companies that their name of their uh, leaders is not known and they already have like mal intentions and nobody knows about them and they will advance building. Mm -hmm. I, I am strongly, I'm a strongly in a side that we need to have big, uh, uh, like good people to have access to bigger and better models. That's the only way that we can um, ensure the the safety of our society, the safety of everybody, whether they are pro or uh, against the advancement of AI. Yeah. What are and, some of, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. You know, I, I, we, we talked about bias and we talked about cyber security and we talked about the implication uh, of the power consumption. And I want to ask you, what are some significant potential impacts of AI on jobs and job displacement? That is a part that um, really makes me to think a lot because I agree that we are my my biggest concern, as I mentioned, is how it can impact a society as a whole and bring it to a side that people hate each other. But I think a more near future impact would be the job displacement. And unfortunately, and I say it with a heart filled with sadness, that the job that would be impacted first are the jobs that require less education. And it puts our society in a vicious cycle. If you could not afford getting good education and you are not highly skillful, you are first to go out of the cycle of uh, basically job market. And because you never learned to like better and um, more uh, demanding uh, skills, uh, you would be in a worse situation unless the, the the government decides to basically have some sort of um, help for people who will go out of job. A lot of repetitive jobs and the selling point of a lot of these um, generative AI model and AI in general are to take away repetitive jobs that, that usually are held by people who could not pursue a higher education. 
the most mm. I, I think hard reaching part of it is that education is expensive. If education was a choice and you decided not to pursue education, I, I would say this is your choice. You are dealing with uh, what you chose in your past. But because education is so expensive, there, are, there might be people who are way smarter, way better, highly intelligent. They just could not afford to have a higher education. They could not afford to learn a skill and they would be the first to go and they would be um, basically in this uh, grind of transient time of the technology, they, they, they would suffer. I love to think about that a lot of jobs would be reshaped, particularly jobs, um, let's say, junior lawyers, junior developers, uh, administrative jobs. A lot of them would be reshaped and a lot of the repetitive their aspects of their job would be modified. But we are getting closer and closer to an era that a lot of job actually would be displaced, absolutely done by AI. Yeah. And before we get there, we need governments to think about this. Either have um, systems that provide education, provide learning new skills to people who might go out of jobs, and also to provide them with the, the basic levels of um, at least uh, life necessities. Nobody should go hungry. Nobody should go without health care. Nobody should go without a shelter. And nobody should earn this thing by losing their dignity. People should be able to hold on to their dignity and still at least receive every life necessity. Yeah. That is the part that makes it really hard because then this is not about just sending a paycheck to somebody's home while they are staying at home. We need to rethink how people make money. Yeah. A good news that I heard on the other side of it, that AI can bring jobs to people who lose, who never had a chance to work, was um, basically a model that could listen. So you have this uh, speech recognition uh, that the person who uh, are disabled toward their motor um, skills, um, they could talk with the robot and guide them to do a certain task that maybe guiding them programmatic, programmatically is harder, but because there is a human guiding them, that was easier. So we are going to bring all of those jobs, but this transition would be heavy, would be painful, and we need to have um, certain rules, regulation in place to make sure that we are not making our society suffer. Yeah. You know, but I have a question, what you said about people who are less educated. I think that we currently see that it, AI is taking jobs that are really uh, demanding education, you know, marketing, legal advisors, um, uh, designers, coders, engineers, um, uh, financial uh, um, uh, professionals. So all of are these, yes. yeah, yeah. So all of them, there are people who really, you know, they were educated. And right now, in order to be a coder, a junior coder, I could use a, um, a co-pilot and, and say, okay, I don't need all these juniors and it takes time to train them. And I would do, I know, 30, 40% more of what I'm doing right now. So I need less people. Uh, and by the way, the, the people who are doing, you know, like building uh, uh, buildings or building the road or uh, someone who's who's doing like, I don't know, like um, uh, things that demand manpower, right? These people are, are less prone to uh, to these changes. So I'm not sure if I, I would take only the the people who are less educated. I think it's going to be really wide. The change is going gonna, is gonna to be from side to side as I see it. I agree that it's going to impact everybody. Regarding people who are doing manpower, I think there would be advancement in robotic right now happening that a lot of actually more dangerous jobs like mining, uh, uh, basically the construction worker, those would be replaced. Because if suppose you have a robot that can build faster and you are not liable about their safety that's going to be a better option rather than asking somebody who can get sick or who can get injured to come and work for you that's why they would be 
those job replacement. I agree with your point that a lot of highly educated jobs also would be impacted. There are two considerations there. One is, um, at least uh, throughout my conversation in different communities, the need for junior developer to work to get to the senior level is still there. And you cannot use AI to push them, push people from grad students to become a senior developer. You still need that transition. You, you still need time to make them to learn and evolve to a senior level. A lot of these jobs would be modified for these people to learn how to use these tools to make what they want to do faster and better. So the amount of job that one person would be doing would be more because now they have all of these productivity tools. On the second, um, and also, there is always the problem of liability. For jobs like uh, financial decision, legal, uh, medical, uh, you still need somebody to sign off on that treatment plan, on that contract. And because we want the person to be liable, those jobs wouldn't go away even if the person generates a whole contract utilizing AI. It doesn't mean that it would be forever, but my point being that those would be impacted the last rather than jobs that uh, suppose a a secretary job, somebody who just sits down and answers the calls and make sure that the boss's basically calendar is good, those jobs would go away immediately. They are going to be highly impacted. So what would, what, be provided to that person who so provided that service to be able to find a new job. Yeah. That's one side of it. There is also something that you mentioned that you need less developer to do the work for you. That's a question that I have. Are we going to have more and better ideas? And that's my optimistic view. Or are we going to expect our society to grow with the same rate? Uh, grow from a technological and uh, like a career perspective that people who are a skilled will go actually out of jobs because there are less work than the the applicant. I'm hoping that we have better ideas, more ideas that we wanted to build. And now we have enough manpower to actually build them because people are not doing redundant, repetitive tasks. But there is also this fear that maybe we feel like enough is enough and we just need maybe now one developer to work 40 hours a week and then the other two developers, there is nothing for them to do. I hope we stay at the first one. I hope that we think about uh, ideas that can make the whole world better. Yeah. And and, and I want to add one more point in here. There are so many work that we can be done that are not immediately in our society, in our country. And I'm hoping a lot of us uh, sit in ourselves that go and build somewhere else if we cannot find what we wanted to build where we immediately live. Even if it's not to physically move, but we can have impact somewhere that uh, actually we can see the impact of our work. Yeah, I think that there are two more points that comes to my mind. First, uh, nobody said we have to work that much. That's one thing. Maybe we need to work less. I don't know. I'm a workaholic, so I don't (laughs) think about that. Yeah, I love working too, but I think that that, that's a question. Who decided that we need to work that much? That's one question. And second thing that we don't have because we cannot really imagine that, it's like, subtracting the number of jobs that you currently have is obvious. So instead of uh, three developers, we're going to have two, right? So that's, that's obvious. But imagining what would be new jobs and new positions that we don't currently have, it's much harder to just imagine, like, like let's think about being a YouTuber, thinking about this possibility 20 years ago, you wouldn't even think about it because there were, were no YouTube, right? So there are going to be these kinds of new positions that we cannot yet imagine. And adding this to the calculations is much harder than deleting the things that we currently know about. 
And these two things, first, the question of how much should we work? That's a question. And the second is what would be the new positions, new markets, new demands that would be in society? We don't know that too, right? So Absolutely. it's like, we don't know. You know, um, my son is very chill. He's very easygoing. And he says, I don't want to work too much. I don't want to do too many things. And I saw on Instagram that in Japan, you have people that their job description is that they're doing nothing, right? So if you want to go shopping and you don't want to go alone, you just have someone walking next to you. He doesn't have... It doesn't have to talk to you or anything, but you don't want to feel that you're going alone or to some kind of a vacation. He's just sitting next to you. Or uh, if you want to, uh, you know, like uh, go on a walk and you don't want to walk alone at night, you have someone just walking next to you. And just imagine what kind of a position is this? I would never think about it here. Like what we currently have is like, like who, who would imagine this kind of job, right? So I'm not saying everybody's going to be this kind of a position, but there will be new demands in society that we need to answer Absolutely. and new, new roles that we would have. Absolutely. I 100% yeah. agree with you. I love to think about the future as bright and optimistic. So hopefully we will adapt and find, a, find ways to use AI to benefit everybody. AI for all. Yeah. So what can individuals, businesses, and governments do to promote responsible AI? I think I mentioned that as uh, individuals. Um, let me go from the other side, from the government. Yeah. Uh, we require to have the governments that is spending on educating the society and also to build laws and regulation. Um, I think U.S. is a little bit behind, but uh, Europe is developing the, all of these laws and regulation to save people from um, the fake, for example, or from other type of um, basically attacks and to make sure that their privacy would be restored and saved. But as individuals, I think the mindset of this is easy and I want to just um, stay in this easy state unfortunately has to change i i know it might be hard to hear but we need to believe that change is fixed change is the only fixed thing everything's gonna change and unless we are adapting and constantly learning we won't be able to survive i also beg people that please talk with those that you think they are not thinking the same way as you do it never happened to me at, that I talk with somebody and I cannot find any any common ground. There is always something and you can build on it and it can bring the society together. It it's, brings us together and makes us to think about all of the aspects that we are not immediately thinking. Bias and um, basically not caring about the diversity in the workplace and in society can bring us to the point that we are not thinking about the corner cases. If you are not a woman, you never, or I, I don't want to stereotype, but think about a situation that you never seen uh, long nails. So it's harder to imagine that not long nails might not work when you are building a touch screen. So you need to have people from different backgrounds to see all of the corner cases. And the last point that I always bring is, I think fear biological ignorance more than artificial intelligence. I think we are more harmful to our society if we don't want it to be careful than what artificial intelligence can do ever. I see. So what's your number one tip for leaders today? For the leaders, I think bring more people who are disagreeing with you. If yeah. everybody says, if every, everybody thinks you are right, you are surrounded by people who are not honest. Yeah. I think that in general, it's not only leaders of companies and, and states that people tend to talk to people they agree with and they're similar yes. to them. And it's more comfortable 
and it seems that everything is flowing easily and and even faster when you have these people around um and you see it in in startups in businesses in in politics in governments you see it all around that uh when somebody gives you a um you know another idea you could either take it and say okay i need to consider it i don't have to agree with everything but i could consider something that is really different from what i see or you could say no like this person is completely wrong and what i see is the total truth and that's it and, and maybe the fact that we question everything and we would question more and more what is reality what is true because we want to be more um you know um To, to be open minded about the possibility that it might be manipulated, maybe in this way we would think twice before saying that this is the total truth and being you know black and white one uh, one sided and that's it so so I maybe it will change agree. this way so thank you, Roya, for your time. Where could people hear more about your work and contact you? Um, I think um, I can provide you with my LinkedIn and uh, and I'm also based in yeah. Boston. I lead a lot of community events. Um, I would be more than happy to see you in person and you can always contact me on my LinkedIn. I have a community and networking uh, time slot on my calendar that you can just go on my LinkedIn and book and um, talk with me in person. Yeah, it's really a pleasure talking to you, Roya, and I really enjoyed our talk. And uh, I wish you best of luck with all these ambitions and you have such a good heart and good goals. So I, I wish it will be um, successful. Thank you so, so much. It was, and, um, it was a really huge opportunity for me to talk with you, learn from you. And thank you for having me, honestly. I hope that someday maybe I see you here or maybe I can travel to you and sure. spend the coffee and chat. Sure. Thank you. And to all of you changemakers out there, thank you for joining us. I invite you to sign up to a new online program, Unlocking the Power of Generative AI, uh, designed to equip leaders with the skills to build successful generative AI products. And I'll see you next week with another innovative talk.